this is the first of our lessons on uh, simple harmonic motion and I'm going to solve uh, one AP or maybe two AP questions all the way at the end depending on how much time I spend. I don't want to make the video too, too long. Um, so for simple harmonic motion, I wouldn't suggest to go over the notes in the classroom that they posted on Google Classroom. So before you go over any notes, watch the video um, that I suggest you to watch and the one that I posted for you um, online. So please watch this video. And after you watch this video, it will make more sense about everything that, um, that I'm going to be talking in the lesson. So if you did watch this video, and it's all visual and visual explanation how x and y and um, how the velocity and the distance and acceleration are related. So in the video, you watch that um, the displacement over time is equal to a cosine omega t. And a is the maximum displacement or the amplitude of the oscillation. Um, v is the derivative. You don't have to worry about that you don't understand calculus or haven't taken calculus yet, but just believe for now that it will be equal to negative a omega sine omega t. And then acceleration is negative a, again, it's the derivative of the velocity, and negative a omega squared cosine omega t. And omega is the angular velocity, or oh, they call it um, angular frequency sometimes, because um, it is equal to 2 pi f, and f is the frequency. Um, if you don't remember the formula and how to, what omega is equal to, you just have to remember that omega is angular velocity, and that's the change of the angle over the time. And the angle over one rotation, so if we talk about one rotation, the angle is 2 pi, and t is the period of one rotation, time it takes to make one full revolution. And 1 over t is the frequency, and this is where the formula is coming from, 2 pi um, f. So before I start explaining um, question number 18, um, please go over the video, um, the, the video that I ask you to watch. And so please go over the video, and then um, come back, and we're going to do number 18. And if you did watch the video and you understood everything conceptually, Let's try to do number 18. So the information in number 18 that is given, the mass of the object is, instead of writing, I'm just going to highlight it. Um, the mass of the object is given 5 kilogram, and it is uh, suspended by a spring which stretches 10 centimeters. So they take the spring and they put the mass of 5 kilogram on it, and then the spring stretches by 10 centimeters. Then they attach the mass, when they attach the mass. Um, after that, they pull it down additionally 5 centimeters, so that's going to be your amplitude and for the oscillation, um, and release it. Its position as function of the time is approximately, and now you have to figure out which one of these ones is the solution for the position over time. Um, the position of a time if you remember the formula that I just showed you in this page, the position of a time is a cosine omega t. So that would be a cosine omega t. And omega t, sorry. And because they stretch it down, so if this is your spring, um, after they put the mass, it was at some equilibrium. So they stretch it down by five centimeters. And then it started to oscillate up and down. So the amplitude is five, right? Um, so here is the mass. So because they stretch it down by 5 centimeters, I know it's going to be negative. So I know my x is going to be negative, um, it's 5 centimeters, 0 0.05. Now I have to figure out what my omega is equal to. So I'm going to do um, little calculations right here for my omega before I 
um, plug in my Omega T. So I know they stretch the mass um, by 10 centimeters, or the st they stretch the spring by 10 centimeters when they place the mass in. So I know when it reaches the first time equilibrium before they stretch additional 5 centimeters, um, the forces acting on the mass are mg and kx, or the force of the spring. So the force of the spring is kx, it's negative, but it only tells you the direction of the force, so you don't have to plug in negative, but the magnitude is kx, and equals to mg. So I'm doing this for this part. And from here I can find what my k is equal to, because I need it for omega, and I'll show you how. So kx is 0.1 is equal to mass times g is 50. So my k is equal to 500 newtons per meter. So I know what k is equal to. Now, um, to find omega, to find omega, I know, that, I know that omega is equal to 2 pi frequency. That's the same as 2 pi over the period. And the period for the spring is equal to 2 pi, the square root of m over k. And this is just the formula that you um, have seen in the past or in the lessons that you went through. And this is the formula that was just introduced to you at the beginning of the lesson. So um, now I have to find my period first. So if I find the period, I have... Um, Actually, let's not even plug in the period. Let's plug in everything into the formula. So omega is equal to 2 pi. And all of that divided by 2 pi m over k. So 2 pi and 2 pi cancels. And I have 1 divided by m over k. Then omega is equal to, when you divide 1 over, it's the same as flipping over the fraction. So it's going to be the square root of k over m. And k is 500. I just found what k is equal to. And m is 5, so that gives me 100, which is 10. And measured in radians uh, per second. So I find what my omega is equal to. Now if I go back and plug in into my equation, I have x is equal to negative 0 0.05 cosine omega is 10 t. So that would be my solution. And that looks like it is e. Okay, here is number one from your lessons online. An object oscillates at the end of a spring. Um, the position of the function of time is represented by the graph. Which of the following formulas represents the position and velocity over the object? Of the object. So I see um, the function is the sine function. It starts from zero. Cosine starts from um, the maximum displacement, positive or negative and it's a positive sine function. So I know it's gonna be a positive sine, sine function for position, so it's not E. Then I have to figure out my period because this is the part um, that you need to know and the period of sine and cosine functions is two pi. And so if you have, um, in this case, so it's supposed to be two pi. So your period, wherever it is inside right there, um, wherever it is inside right there, should be 2 pi. Um, but what you have is 2 instead of pi, because it completes one full wave on one full revolution um, in time of 2 seconds. It's supposed to be 2 pi. So it looks like only pi is left. So for my response right there inside, I have to have only pi. And I do, every single one of them has a pi. So that means that is 
right? So every single one of them, this one is right, this one is right, this one is right, this one is right. Every single one of them has the right height. Then the next one is my um, amplitude is positive 5. And yes, my amplitude is positive 5. So that is correct for every single one of them as well. Then the next one I have to look on the other side. Um, do you remember when we looked at this formula? For cosine, the next one is going to be sine. And the next one is going to be cosine. In my case, my first one is sine. Then my next one is going to be cosine. And the next one is going to be sine. So here, when I go from sine to cosine, I didn't have to change the sine. Calculus people don't need this explanation. They understand what I'm talking about. But for you guys who did not take calculus and try to survive through this um, part, you just have to understand when it goes from cosine and we take a derivative, the sine appears with a negative. And we go from sine to cosine, um, the sine will not change. We're starting with sine. In our case, we are starting with the sine. So our velocity is going to be cosine. And when we go from sine to cosine, the sine didn't change. So our sine, our velocity is going to be um, cosine. This one has sine. This one has sine. So that doesn't work. So I have to cross out D now. So what's left is only these two. Now I have to go back to this equation and look at something else. So now I'm going to look at this equation. And let's see what else I see here that I should pay attention to. Um, if I had on my x no omega here in my, uh, in my velocity after I take the derivative, I don't just have a, I also have omega. And next time when I take a derivative, I don't just have a omega, I have omega squared. And if I take the next derivative, it's going to be again changing the sign because from cosine to sine, they change the sign. So if you had to, but there's no such thing. But if you had to take a derivative, you would have omega to the third power and you would have to change the sign in this case. So just go back <laughs> one more time again here so you understand what I'm going to be doing. Um, so when I go from first to the second, omega is going to appear. So going back to my equation, when I go from the first to the second, omega has to appear, but doesn't change here. It has to stay the same. It was the same everywhere. It doesn't change. It just appears times itself every single time. So if I had 2 pi, if I had initially 2 pi, I, don't, I cannot have 2 pi. A is out. And then here I had pi t, and I have not pi t. This one is out. Then what's left is I have, let me erase this one. So I had pi t. I still have pi t. I, I had amplitude 0.5. I had amplitude 0.5. Pi got out. So my pi gets out and appears over here. And then I change my sine to cosine. So my response is a b. Okay, here is number 19. Um, some of you asked me to solve number 18, 19, and I also added um, a few more questions to, to this video since I'm already making it for this for this week. I'll try to make about one, two videos a week, and it's easier for me if you ask me which, um, which topics you want me to cover so I know exactly what you didn't understand and where you need help. So the mass of the, um, on the spring is given two kilogram is attached to a spring having a force constant of K to 90 as um, in the figure that's shown. The mass is displaced from its equilibrium position and released. Its frequency of oscillation is approximately. So I can find the period. The period is 2 pi for the spring and uh, the square root of um, m over k. I have 2 pi. m is given. It's 2. k 
p is given 290 and i guess if you put this in the calculator that should give so that should be uh point five point fifty two now i see why you were asking the questions um the period is me measured in seconds so period is the time so it's point fifty two yes that's your correct answer not the d part Okay, so here is number 20. Um, two circus clowns, um, each a mass of 50 kilogram, swing toward each other, and then the rope is has length of 25 meters, as shown in the figure. At the peak of the swing, one grabs another, and the two swing back and forth. Um, if you remember the period of the oscillations for the pendulum, it's 2 pi um, L over G. And it doesn't depend on the mass, so it doesn't matter what their mass is. So I have 2 pi, L is 25 meters, and length is more than meters, and this one is 10. I get 9.9 .9 seconds. And again, period, it's time, so the answer is A. Um, for this question, the weight of mass M is at rest at point O when suspended from a spring, when it is pulled down and released in oscillation, uh, and oscillates between uh, positions A and B, which statement about the system uh, consisting of the spring and the mass is correct? The gravitational potential energy for A of the system is greatest at A. The gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh, and at A, the h is not the highest, so that's not true. The elastic potential energy of the system is greatest at O. The elastic potential energy um, is equal to 1 half kx squared, and there is no x maximum at O, so there is, that is wrong. The rate of change of momentum has its greatest magnitude uh, between at points A and B. Not sure yet. The rate of change of gravitational potential energy is smallest at O. The rate of change of gravitational potential energy. Um, not sure this one yet. I'm going to come back to this one. The rate of change of gravitational potential energy has its greatest magnitude at A and B. So to talk about the gravitational potential energy change, um, the potential energy changes when I have mgh or delta h in this case so when it goes a little bit from here to here um do not know i cannot say if this is the greatest or not um the smallest or the greatest because i don't have enough information about how much and probably that's not the one but i'm going to show you something on c and maybe that will make sense so i don't think these two will be let's look at c um the change of the momentum has its greatest magnitude at a and b so change of the momentum momentum is ma mass change of the velocity and equals to force times the time the impulse correct so your force is equal to mass change of the velocity over the time or equals to mass ac sorry sorry not ac mass acceleration right so, um, in this case, your acceleration or the force, the maximum force acting on the mass is at A at and B. And maximum acceleration is also at A and B. This is where the maximum force is acting. So that's how it is, I see. So for this question, um, the graph of position versus time for an object oscillating at the free end of a horizontal spring is shown below. A point or points at which the object has positive velocity and zero acceleration are. Um, so because this is the position over time graph, the slope of the position over time graph is the velocity. So the velocity here is zero. 
the velocity here is zero the velocity is here is zero the velocity here is zero the velocity here is zero the velocity here is positive let me do it in a different color the velocity here is positive and they say um positive velocity so again the velocity here is positive the slope is positive and the velocity here is positive um, this is going to be negative velocity negative velocity and again somewhere there negative velocity but it needs zero acceleration um, from all the points that i have so if i had the graph let me do the graph here so if i have the graph of the velocity over time i would have positive maximum positive maximum zero uh, maximum negative so it looks like it's gonna be like this again zero maximum positive again zero at this point then I have maximum negative and again zero and maximum positive and zero so if i look at this case my acceleration is equal to zero right here the slope of velocity graph is um, or tangent line to the velocity graph is your acceleration so these are your accelerations so acceleration right here is equal to zero so in which of these points um let me do this in which color can i do this let me do an orange um, in which of these points do I have positive velocity and zero acceleration? I have positive velocity here and I have zero acceleration over here. I have positive velocity here and I have zero acceleration over here. And I have positive velocity here and I have zero acceleration here. So the points that we have here are A and E. So my answer is A and E. This is 1996 AP exam question. I decided I'm going to get um, one video with AP exam question in to my lesson for oscillations. Um, so they say that they have a spring that is heading on the stand the way it's shown. Um, they talk about that the spring constant is... Um, oh, actually the first one they ask you what will you need in order to find the, the spring constant k experimentally so you wish to determine the ex experimentally the spring constant so what would you need to to measure so in order to do to measure um the spring constant i probably will need the mass um so this information we will use later pro a like bc um so i will probably need the mass I will need the ruler because I want to determine um, by how much it stretches before it gets to equilibrium. So then I will have to set up my um, force of the spring is equal to force of the gravity. And that is gonna be your Kx is equal to mg. And you can determine um, the, um, the spring constant. So that would be, would be my answer for it. A part. For B part, they say assume that the spring constant is determined now and it is um, 500 newtons per meter. So I already have your K, which is 500 newtons per meter. Um, mass to kilogram is attached to the lower end of the spring. So the mass is 2 kilograms. So let me do this part mass of two kilogram is attached to the lower end of the spring so the mass is two kilogram and the spring is released from rest so the um so here is the equilibrium i'm going to call this point o and the spring is released from rest determine the frequency of oscillations of the mass so if I'm looking for the frequency, I need to find the period first. So for B part, I need to find 
the period. The period is going to be um, 2 pi and it is m over k for the spring. So that's 2 pi. The mass they attached is 2 kilogram. K they give you 500. So that will give me, that gives me point four seconds. So that part is point four seconds. But they ask you about the frequency and the frequency is equal to one over T, which is one over point four. So that is 10 over four, correct? Which gives me 2.5. And measured in Hertz for C part um, they say suppose that the spring is now used to in a spring scale that is limited to a maximum value of 25 newtons but you would like to weigh an object that has a mass bigger than 25 newtons you must use commonly available equipment um, this and the spring scale to determine the weight of the object without breaking the scale. So um, draw a clear diagram that shows the way you would um, do your calculations to find out the spring used with the spring scale to determine the weight of an object. Explain how you would make the determination. So one of the ways you could place um, the incline. So you have you stand and place your screen screen right here. Then your the force of the spring. So here would be your mg. So that's one of the ways to reduce um, the force. You have this one, and this would be. So if this would be the angle, right? That would be the angle. So this is mg sine. So your force of the spring would be um, mg sine after it reaches equilibrium sine theta. So you could figure out um, your so that's kx is equal to mg sine. And if you're looking for mass, you can find mass this way. If you're looking for k, you can find k this way. So this is one of the ways. Um, the other way, I guess, would be if you know what you already have the scale missing. The other way would be probably good to use um, the pulley system. So if I have my spring system here. And I place the mass that is heavier than 25 newtons. I could put place the pulley and put the string and attach to some stand right here. Then if this is the mass, then um, the force here, I'm gonna call attention, and the force right here equal to each other and equal to mg. So 2 times tension is equal to mg, in this case. And your tension is equal to the spring constant, so that is 2 times kx is equal to mg. So you reduce um, the mass this way so you don't break, don't break your, um, your system.